Hello everyone, Arctic Black here. Welcome to my first review video, and hopefully the first video I'm actually going to leave up on the channel. Today, I'd like to tell you about an indie game that I played recently that I feel deserved more attention than it got when it first came out. I figured this was a good time to cover this game as well, since this year is also rabbit themed. Kaze and the Wild Masks is an indie platformer developed in Brazil by Pixel Hive and published by Sodesco in March of 2021. The game plays like the original Donkey Kong Country games, or at least that's what the Steam reviews lead me to believe. I have a bit of a confession to make. I've never played a Donkey Kong game before, but if I had, maybe I would have known what I was in for. Before we get into that, however, I would briefly like to address the criticism a few people have directed towards the game for being a Donkey Kong clone, namely, that I don't understand it. It's basically like complaining about getting more of something you already know you like. I for one welcome any game that draws inspiration from days when games were wholly complete on launch and didn't lock content behind microtransactions, etc. What I'm saying is that Kaze and the Wild Masks would have fit right in in a library of games from the good old days. That said, let's talk about story. The story for Kaze and the Wild Masks is simple but effective in setting the stage for the gameplay to follow. The opening cinematic for the game shows Kaze and her brother Hogo investigating what appears to be some ruins. Kaze reaches for the ring in the center, but the ring yoinks Hogo instead, releasing the entity trapped inside in the process, who proceeds to send Kaze flying to the first level of the game. Kaze is now on a quest to defeat the being released from the ring and restore Hogo to his former self. Additionally, produce in the area has become genetically modified by a curse, creating the enemies you encounter throughout the game. It's some really interesting and creative character design. Speaking of enemies, let's talk about mechanics. Enemies generally can be defeated by jumping on them Mario style or by using one of Kaze's ear-based attacks though many enemies have areas that do damage to you instead, so it's important to know what you're up against. This is especially true since there is no HP system in the game. One hit and you start the level over, unless you happen to collect one of the hearts located in a few places on most stages, which protects you from a single time you would have taken damage. Additionally, there are checkpoints about halfway into most stages that will save you from having to redo everything, and there's no life system, so you're free to attempt a stage as many times as you need to. This makes sense, as lives were a mechanism designed into games specifically to chew through quarters, and were just a holdover from the arcade days anyway. Also scattered throughout the levels are purple gems you'll want to collect at least a hundred of per stage to fully clear it, orange letters that spell out Kaze, which gives you a story card, which is the main way the game tells the rest of the story, which I won't spoil here, and two portals that lead to many challenge stages that will give you half of a green gem each, which unlocks challenge stages in the overworld. Occasionally, as the title of the game would suggest, you'll find masks on statues that, when worn, augment Kaze's abilities beyond what her ears are capable of. Respectively, the bird mask allows you to fly and shoot projectiles. The shark mask allows you to swim well, the Tiger Mask allows you to dash and cling to walls with your claws. And the Lost Mask? We'll talk about the Lost Mask in a second. The platforming can be best summarized in three words. Precise, methodical, unforgiving. True to its inspirations, I presume. The game is pretty good with conveyance. Anyone familiar with platforming games would readily pick up on what the game wants you to do. Though, about halfway through, the game basically requires you to memorize what to do at each part of a stage until you have it muscle memoried in. This goes especially true for bosses and any stage that involves the Lost Mask, which generally I tend to wish stayed lost, as it turns the careful platforming you're used to into an auto-scroller, where you repeat the stage until you do it right. The Lost Mask only shows up a few times throughout the game though. This game is not for the faint of heart. However, I did find levels a bit easier going back to repeat them for missing gems to 100% the game, since I already had learned what I needed to do to complete the level. Also, there is an easier mode available that is probably more forgiving. I wouldn't know I didn't use it. There's also built-in speedrunning stuff for levels you've completed and an online leaderboard. In summary, 
I found Kaze and the Wild Masks to be more challenging than I initially thought, but also very rewarding when I overcame the challenges it had for me. I would highly recommend the game to anyone looking for a challenging platformer, especially fans of the original Donkey Kong Country games. It's very well made, and I think you'll like it. Kaze and the Wild Masks is available on pretty much every platform, including the Steam Deck, so Linux should work, and even the Google Stadia if you have a time machine because it closed down while I was making this video. If you have any recommendations of other games you'd like me to take a look at, let me know in the comments below. I'm all ears. More videos on the way. Probably not all reviews like this, I'm still experimenting to see what works and what doesn't, but I'll try and keep things interesting. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, it helps the channel a lot. Thanks for watching.